horse to ride and a one horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Dashing through the snow in a one horse open sleigh. On the fields we go, laughing all the way. Bells on top tail ring, taking spirits bright. What fun it is to ride and sing a sleigh song tonight. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh! Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way! Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh! Jingle 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 You'll take the lead. Come with us and hear those jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open jingling, 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 open sleigh. Hey! Each night a child is born is a holy night, a time for singing, a time for wondering, a time for worshiping. On this holy night, we celebrate with exceeding great joy the birth of a child, the miracle of eternal love made flesh, as it is in every child. We celebrate the birth of a particular child who would teach us to know and love the world, to know justice and mercy, sacrifice and humility and peace, who would teach us to be love's body, who would ignite in us across millennia the dream of a world made new, a world of kinship and kindness, where every night is holy, every night full, every night full of singing and wondering and worshiping. It is a joy to be together this evening, to be filling this space with holiday cheer and the good news of love everlasting, a news so needed in a world filled with so much heartbreak. So come, let us behold one of the deepest stories of hope, which we tell again this year, and let us hear even beyond the words the deeper human truths of love brought down to earth, born again and again among us and through us. I want to invite us to rise and body our spirit for our first carol, number 225, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. So let me note, offer a note about lyrics as we do so. The, carol, the carols in our hymnal might be a little different than the traditional lyrics. Tonight, we deal with myth and metaphor and a little magic. Please sing the lyrics you know or bring comfort to you. They might be different than the hymnal, and that's okay. The choirs of angels won't mind. So let us sing.
Welcome to Christmas Eve with the Universalist Unitarian Church of Peoria. I'm Jesse Laughlin, and it is my pleasure to serve here as the Director of Lifespan Religious Education with this congregation. We're very glad you're here this evening to take this day and this opportunity to be together in community, to be gathered around in our shared promise to support each other's spiritual journeys. We strive to live our mission of embracing freedom, loving abundantly, growing in mind, body, and spirit, and adding to the wholeness of our world. Let us worship together all gender identities, sexual orientations, abilities, racial and ethnic identities, and politics. In living our mission, we recognize the network of relationship of which we are a part. This is the ancestral home of the Peoria people. They were here long before the first European settlers came down the Illinois River. We honor the people who, for who they were and for who the Peoria people are today. I'd especially like you to welcome any guests that we have today. Thank you for coming through the doors and joining us this evening in worship. Thank you also for joining us online. If you're new, please help us get to know you and stay for some cookies, wassail, coffee, hot cocoa, in Fellowship Hall, or to visit in the Zoom room after service. We're so glad you can join us tonight. If you're new, we do gather every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m., nurturing a liberal religious spirit in central Illinois. You can fill out one of the cards and leave it in the offering baskets as you leave if you'd like more information. Please be sure to take a moment now to turn your devices to worship mode. That would be either silent or vibrate. Maybe take a moment to check. And you should have envelopes in your order of worship this evening. If you would like to make an offering, for the mission of the church. The offering plates will be at the back of the sanctuary when you leave. Our link for online donations is also posted in the QR code in the order of service or in the chat if you're online. Thank you for your support of our ministry in all of our seasons. It is our practice to light the chalice at the beginning of worship. Let me invite Jim Hicks to lead us in that. Chalice Lighting by Reverend Juniper Meadows. We light this chalice not in opposition to the darkness of the days, but as a lantern by which we may learn the lessons of the cold, of the quiet, of the still things that wait beneath the snow, biding their time until the sun kisses the sleeping hemisphere and bursts something new into the world. May we be bathed in this light of reason, this warmth of community, this fire of commitment. May it be as a village bonfire, a beacon to the darkness for all travelers, all seekers, all who wander in the dark and cold, all who would bow their heads as a new day is born. If you have ever felt friendless, felt forgotten, if you carry a secret pain, only mystery knows the name of if love is singing like a bird in your heart, if you absolutely cannot wait any longer for the dawn, come, gather, feel, listen, be, become, 
belong here now in this sacred space made of questions wrapped in love. Our first lesson is an enduring one from British Unitarian author Charles Dickens. This year marks the 180th anniversary of his book, A Christmas Carol. Dickens crafts the story of Ebenezer Scrooge, a squeezing, wrenching, grasping, scraping, clutching, covetous old sinner, hard and sharp as flint, from which no steel has ever struck out generous fire. Secret and self-contained and solitary as an oyster. Scrooge's late partner, Jacob Marley, returns after being dead for seven years and provides a possible salvation for Scrooge and the terrible impact of his selfish cold life. Scrooge's heart is in fact transformed. After visits with the ghosts of Christmas past, present, and future, we come to the end of the story. After Ebenezer has started to live generously, but his clerk, Bob Cratchit, doesn't yet know of his transformation. Hello, growled Scroo Scrooge in his accustomed voice, as near as he could feign to it. What do you mean coming here at this time of day? Oh, I'm very sorry, sir, said Bob. I am behind my time. You are, repeated Scrooge. Yes, I think you are. Step this way, sir, if you please. Oh, it's only once a year, pleaded Bob, appearing from the tank. Oh, it shall not be repeated. I was making merry yesterday. Now I'll tell you what, my friend, said Scrooge. 
I am not going to stand for that sort of thing any longer. And therefore, he continued, leaping from his stool and giving Bob such a dig in the waistcoat that he staggered back into the tank again. And therefore, I'm going to raise your salary. Bob trembled. He got a little nearer to the ruler. He had a momentary idea of knocking Scrooge down with it, holding him and calling the people in the court to help in a straight waistcoat. Merry Christmas, Bob, Scrooge said with an earnestness that could not be mistaken. As he clapped him on the back, a merrier Christmas, Bob, my good fellow, than I have given you for many a year. I'll raise your salary, and I'll endeavor to assist your struggling family, and we will discuss your affairs this very afternoon over a Christmas bowl of smoking bishop. Make up the fire and buy another coal scuttle before I dot you another eye, Mr. Bob Cratchit. Scrooge was better than his word. He did it all, and infinitely more. And to Tiny Tim, who did not die, he was a second father. He became as good a friend, as good a master, as good a man, as the good old city knew, or any other good old city, town, borough, in the good old world. Scrooge had no further intercourse with spirits. It was always said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well. And if any man alive possessed that knowledge, it was him. May that be truly said of us and all of us. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us. Everyone. Thank you to share my days. Thank you to share my days with the 
Good evening. I am the Reverend Gianni Foliano. Uh, I have the privilege of serving as the uh, manager and strategist of equity, belonging, and change within the office of the president of our Unitarian Universalist Association. On behalf of our president, Reverend Dr. Sophia uh, Betancourt, and the over 200 staff at UUA and Beacon Press, I bring warm Merry Christmas and holiday greetings. I'd like to share with you a lesson from the Christian sacred text, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1, 3 through 7. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, on to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child, and so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddled cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Please rise and body your spirit for our carol number 253, O Come All Ye Faithful.
Luke 2, verses 8 through 12. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. About 160 years ago, Unitarian minister Edmund Hamilton Sears wrote the hymn, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear. And he wrote, The days are hastening on by prophet bards foretold, when with the ever-circling years comes round the age of gold, the age of peace. And it was a bloody time in America when he was writing. The Mexican-American War just ended the Civil War inched closer every year, and it was no better elsewhere. Ireland was in the grip of famine. Europe burned with revolution in Italy and France, in Germany, Austria, and Poland. It was a wounded time. And in that time, a shy minister wrote this hymn, not with a hope for some other world, but in the hope that this very world we know would know peace and all the people in it would sing together. Peace on earth to all goodwill. Peace on earth to all goodwill. Is it farther from us now, this peace, than it was 160 years ago? It can feel like it, right? Peace on earth, goodwill to all people. Is it farther than it was 2,000 years ago? Let us ponder and let us sing. Please rise and join me for our next carol, number 244, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear.
And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was foretold, which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds.
The next reading is Matthew 2, 7 through 11. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding joy, great joy. And when they came into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, and frankincense, and myrrh.
I offer you these words from the writings of a dear beloved colleague and trans sibling in faith, the Reverend Julian Hamaika Soto. It doesn't seem like much. One emperor, one mandate, one census, two young people traveling, and a young woman pregnant and feeling every bump on the road, every vertebra of the laden donkey, and arriving to their destination late in the purple night, lit by one bright star and so many cold shoulders. No, they said, no room here. Not good news for someone so near, and what about the backache and the contractions near to giving birth? And sometimes that moment is exalted as the advent arrival of the liberator. But the truth is that dullness of heart, flatness of courage, is the same as the no, the same as cold shoulders, rolling eyes, and doors blatantly thrown shut. No angel, no astrologer, no star and no sheep can convince a heart close to the natural yes of people around us, neighbor, kin, and about to be friend. What can we liberate if we cannot see the journey as an example of our own? Throw open the door, make ready the space, love as though there is no other medicine. What if you are not a righteous innkeeper, but instead the manager, the stable, the heaven of rest.
Now is the moment of magic, when the whole round earth turns again toward the sun. And here's a blessing. The days will be longer and brighter now, even before the winter settles in to chill us. Now is the moment of magic, when people beaten down and broken, with nothing left but misery and candles and their own clear voices, kindle tiny lights and whisper secret magic. And here's a blessing. The dark universe is suddenly illuminated by the lights of the menorah, suddenly ablaze with the lights of the canard. And the whole world is glad and loud with winter singing. Now is the moment of magic, when an eastern star beckons the ignorant toward an unknown goal. And here's a blessing. They find nothing in the end but an ordinary baby, born at midnight, born in poverty. And the babies cry like bells ringing makes people wonder as they wander through their lives what human love might really look like, sound like, feel like. Now is the moment of magic. And here's a blessing. We already possess all the gifts we need. We've already received our presence. Ears to hear music eyes to behold lights, hands to build true peace on earth, and to hold each other tight. Please rise in body and spirit and join us for our carol, number 245, Joy to the World. Please be seated. On receiving such a moment as this of magic and mystery and joy, after the wow I feel grateful, gifted with such life and such abundant spirit, each of us comes to this time and this service from our own place. It might be anticipation. It might be curiosity. It might be Santa's coming soon. It might be relief that we got here at all. It might be sorrow. It might be loss. We might be here because of obligation. It's okay. We know all the things are here, right? The service 
pulls forth so many aspects of our spiritual human experience, which is part of why we tell this story again and again and find new forms, new applications, new revelation in our current lives. So for this year, I invite you with the question, where are you in this story? Where are you? Are you an angel? That'd be nice. Are you Joseph concerned for the family? Are you a wise person moved by new revelation? You a lamb? Lamb's okay, too. Really. The camels had some perspectives as well, I'm just going to say. They brought the wise people, right? Could you be Mary pondering? She does a lot of pondering. (coughs) Could you be one of the long-lost creators who put together the story in the first place over centuries? But let me add, who's in the story for this evening is also those in the Christmas Carol, right? Bob Cratchit and his wife, who would give Scrooge a piece of her mind. Belle, who was Scrooge's long-lost love. Or even Scrooge himself. Are you feeling a little Scroogey tonight? As my children would attest, I have been watching many versions of A Christmas Carol this year. And the one person that catches me in this moment is Marley. Is Jacob Marley, the long dead partner, returned to offer Ebenezer a chance, a chance to help change his perspective after Marley has become more wise and has something more to say. Humankind should be our business, he says. Humankind should be our business. Marley doesn't, and indeed can't, do the work for Scrooge, but his hopes for Scrooge, that is what he brings. That is what he offers, his hope that Scrooge will find a new way. And we do the same each December, telling ourselves and our children a story that has the power to make a difference, to release those in pain, including ourselves, to embody love and justice in the world, to let us sing a new song in our hearts, something filled with starlight and angel voices even as we labor amid the hardship. So I'll take a cue from Marley in this season, in his hope, and think about what I would wish for. And I would wish it for us, for me and for us. I wish for peace. How can I not start? there, in Gaza, in Israel, in Sudan, and in Ukraine, and oh, so many places. Peace. May there be peace and relief and aid and leaders who can find solutions in terribly complex times and history. Let us begin with the humanity's wish for peace. I wish for us to be good stewards of our liberty, of our voices, of our communities, of our bodies. I wish that we would make a great effort to be good neighbors in this diverse and pluralistic country of so many faiths and colors and abilities. How would we treat the Holy Family? today. And I wish for real care of our earth, 
that we may continue to be in awe of the cosmos, that we look up into the night and have clear skies before us and a sustaining and wonderful earth below. This is what I wish. And what is yours? What is yours? If humanity is our business, if we sing for the life of a child because we believe in this powerful new hope, then as Howard Thurman reminds us, we have a charge to let the work of Christmas begin and that we would do that work. That we would take up these wondrous gifts of mystery, of magic and joy, and go forth into the night and into our lives and live into the world the teachings that will come from this child we celebrate tonight. And now, in that spirit, in the spirit of all that we have been with and heard and enjoyed this evening, we shall sing forth and light candles. Choir will sing Night of Silence. We will all sing Silent Night. And we will pass the light. And I will invite you if the practice of this congregation, if you are new to us, is to rise and try to make a ring around the pews, and we'll take a minute to do so, it's okay. If you need to still stay where you are, we will bring light, and we will all be in the circle wherever we are in the room. And we'll pass the light, please send it to your neighbor. And let me offer a note, we are ever practical here of candle safety. We take the unlit candle and we hold it to the lit candle, not the other way around. That will help too. This is a wonderful moment to practice mindfulness as well as reflection with the music. So I invite you, if you are willing to come and form a circle around the sanctuary, we'll take a moment to do so. Be well spaced and we'll pass the light. Amen. Mm-hmm. 
Let me offer a moment of thanks. Thank you to Cullen and Anthony for handling our tech. Thank you to our excellent musicians. Thank you to the choir led by Dave Breeden. Thank you to all the voices and readers tonight and to those who prepared the treats after the service. Please join us 
aforesaid treats in Fellowship Hall if you are with us in person. If you desire, the offering plates are in the back of the sanctuary. Thank you for being part of this beautiful evening. And so let us go forth. If I could invite Joe to come forth and we can send our light into the world. The spirit of the holy dwells in each of us. The spirit of love dwells in each of us. May the flames in our hands remind us that eternal love dwells in our hearts. May the flames in our hands remind us that the spirit of life dwells among us as we gather. May the flames in our hands remind us that the arc of the universe is indeed in our embodied love needs us to be so embodied in love and faith in order to bend toward justice. Our worship is ended. Let our Christmas begin. Thank you. 